Suddenly, you're the target of a violent attack. It happens fast. There's no time to think. How do you survive the first three seconds of an ambush? How do you train for that? Is it even possible to train for that? What if I were to tell you it is possible? I've done a lot of different martial arts over the years, and I've learned something valuable from each and every one of them. One of the things I've learned is that there's a big difference between fighting in the dojo or the gym or the cell arms and fighting on the street. What's the difference? Let's take a look. Fencing is closely based on dueling. The two principals agree to the time and the place and the rules. They show up at the appointed hour, and it's gentlemen on guard, prêt, allez. Boxing, same thing. You agree to the time and the place and the rules. The two fighters step into the ring, the bell sounds, box. Karate, same thing. You agree to the time and the place and the rules. The two fighters step up on the mat, rei, rei, yoi, hajime. Judo, kendo, wrestling, same thing. You agree to the time and the place and the rules, and it's ready, set, go. It's a classic model, one-on-one, -on -one, nose to nose, mano a mano. We've seen it in about a million Western movie showdowns. We see this in nature all the time. It's about dominance. Who gets to drink first? Who gets to eat? Who gets to breed? The loser loses because he concedes and walks away, and the winner lets him go. We call this model a mutually engaged combat. It's voluntary combat. You agree to the time and the place and the rules, and you participate willingly. This isn't a case of an attacker against a defender. This is a case of Two attackers. Each of the participants has aggressive intentions toward the other. It's all aggression. It's all yang energy. You could say that a mutually engaged combat is a contest to see whose yang is bigger. In martial arts, the mutually engaged combat is a lot of what we do. Sometimes it's all we do. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I enjoy it. I enjoy, uh, I enjoy going up against an opponent when the odds are 50-50 on victory or defeat. I like that time when we give it everything we've got against each other and leave it all on the field. That's my idea of a good time. But that's not what happens on the street. On the street, it isn't a big yang contest. Somebody wants to take your property or your body or your life. You don't agree to the time and the place and there are no rules. The fight is not voluntary, it's damn involuntary. And the loser doesn't concede and walk away. The loser loses everything. We see this model in nature too, between predators and pray. In a mutually engaged combat, you have some time to prepare yourself physically and emotionally. In an ambush, you have no time to prepare yourself physically or emotionally. How do you deal with a surprise attack? The best way to deal with a surprise attack is never to be surprised. That means situational awareness. Another thing you need to deal with a surprise attack is fear management. You may fight, you may run, but if you freeze, you're lost. It also means taking advantage of your natural response, that is to weaponize your flinch reflex. And it takes decisive action. 
I did find one martial art that focused on the ambush almost exclusively, Yaido. I had the pleasure of studying Yaido for a short period of time, Muzo Shindenru School. Uh, the instructor was John Druin, and he brought from Japan Mitsuzuka Takeshi, an eighth dan master. So I had an opportunity to observe someone performing this at a very, very high level of skill. Here's what I think I know about Iaido. Here's the setup. In Iaido, you're sitting having tea, walking down the street, minding your own business, and suddenly you're attacked. Maybe one guy, maybe more than one guy. And what you must do is perceive and respond to that threat in a flinch. You must attack on your opponent's preparation, or you must counterattack, avoiding your opponent's blow and striking back. I really like that. Iaido is drawing the sword. Drawing the sword. That first moment of the confrontation. It's all about the first three seconds of the ambush. And Iaido has in it all the things I think you need to deal with a surprise attack. Situational awareness, fear management, weaponizing your flinch reflex, and making a decisive action. Now it is possible to take the lessons from Iaido and put it to work for you in the modern world. Uh, I know one guy who does this. I'm not saying he's the only guy, but I happen to be familiar with his work, so I'll, I'll, I'll mention it. Tony Blauer, who uh, calls his method the spear system. And it's all about situational awareness, fear management, weaponizing your flinch reflex, and mounting a decisive resistance. That sounds like Iaido to me. I don't know if he thinks of it this way, but I think what he is doing is practicing Iaido in the modern world. Iaido cultivates a certain state of consciousness, sometimes called Mizu no Kokoro, or Mushin, which means to have a mind as calm as still water. When water is free of ripples, smooth as glass, it's like a mirror. It reflects the surrounding environment in a way that is accurate and true. If a bird flies across the sky above that calm water, the water reflects the bird as it passes. It doesn't change the color or breed of the bird. It doesn't show the bird before it arrives or after it's gone. The mirror never anticipates anything, nor does it linger on anything. It reflects exactly what is, how it is, and when it is. Nothing more and nothing less. But if a wind comes up and there are ripples on the water, the reflection is distorted and inaccurate. Those ripples may be emotions, fear, anger, even joy. They may be thoughts, thoughts about the future, thoughts about the past. They can be anything that distracts you from the awareness of the present moment, in the present moment. To have a mind as calm as still water. Mizu no Kokoru. Mushin. Situational awareness. There's one particular type of situational awareness I want to mention. I learned about it from my horse. We call it early pattern recognition. It means you know what happens before what happens happens. Let me give you an example. Just watch. As soon as I release the ball, you know several things. You know that as soon as I release the ball, the ball is going to fall. 
You know it's going to fall in a predictable direction. You know it's going to fall at a predictable speed. And you know it's going to stop falling when it hits my hand. You know all this as soon as I release the ball. In fact, you suspect it as soon as I poise to drop the ball. That's early pattern recognition. That's all it is. You understand that there are certain chains of events that are connected together. If we say that releasing the ball is A, and everything that comes after that is B, we could say that B follows A, B always follows A, B only follows A, and only B follows A. That's what makes it predictable. That's early pattern recognition. Now all you have to do is consider the pre-ambush cues that tell you an ambush is coming. But you've seen that before too. You've seen someone who's angry. You've seen someone who is standing too close to you. Something, someone coming at you too fast. So it's not so much that you have to learn to see, you just have to learn to look. Here's the thing, here's the thing. Life is not a fair fight. Life is not a mutually engaged combat. Life is one ambush after another. And the best you can do is learn how to see it coming, stay cool, and roll with it.